Hello, everybody. My name is MJ the Tutor, and you are listening to another episode of Accounting Makes Sense, an MJ the Tutor podcast. This podcast is focused on helping accounting students all over the world by offering a quick warm up on various accounting and business topics that hopefully leads to the generation of bigger discussions and conversation. In today's episode, our main topic is Mendelo's Matrix, which is a mapping based on the power and interest that a stakeholder has over a business. To make it interesting, we're going to try and put it into a coffee house setting. I'm once again leaning into my quirky fascination with coffees. I've already done a story a while back about a barista and the balance scorecard, and this time it will be with a coffee house and the Mendelo's Matrix. In this coffee house setting, and in fact, this is true for most businesses, the stakeholders are similar. Stakeholders are those people that are interested in what the businesses are up to, and sometimes, or most of the times, they also have power to change the course of the business. So let's start off with an understanding of the Mendelo's Matrix. The Mendelo's Matrix is sometimes referred to as the stakeholders mapping. Basically, what this matrix does is that it helps us map business stakeholders into categories, which will help us in exacting the treatment that we should give them. The categories are based on the interest and power that a stakeholder has in our business. The first category is called minimal effort. This category deals with stakeholders who have very minimal interest and minimal power in the business. In our coffee house setting, these could be your customers or suppliers who have some interest and perhaps some loyalty to the business, but not exactly a very big influence over how the business should be run or operated. With minimal effort, the coffee house doesn't necessarily have to do anything extravagant or over the top to please or keep the stakeholders. We just have to keep on doing what we're doing, sort of like a status quo. The second category is called keep informed. This category deals with stakeholders who have slightly more interest in the business, but perhaps still have minimal power or influence over how the business is run. In general, these stakeholders are more connected to the business, someone like an employee or major customer or suppliers, even minority shareholders. These are of course just examples of stakeholders and it may differ from situation to situation and business to business. In our coffee house setting, we can take the baristas and coffee house managers as stakeholders who may wish to be kept informed of what's happening in the business. Employees are normally perfect examples of stakeholders to keep informed. They are interested in the business because it is their livelihood, but at the same time, as an individual employee, they likely do not have much power to direct and demand changes within the business. So our third category is called keep satisfied. In this category, the stakeholders have lots of power to influence the business, but don't really care much as to how it's currently operated. You may wonder what kind of stakeholders these are, those that don't really care. But as an example, people like your lenders, your bank, or even government could fall under this category. In our coffee house setting, if we had loans with a bank, then the bank would fall under this category. As you can see, the bank would generally have some interest, but not too much really. The, all the bank is worried about is that you fulfill your financial obligations to them. The problem comes in when you run afoul with these stakeholders, and that is when things get interesting and crazy. So like the bank, if our coffee house misses an installment payment or anything like that, the bank could foreclose the coffee house, right? Additionally, think about the coffee house having to have health and safety standards in place to run the place. So the health and safety regulators would be another stakeholder that could fall under this keep satisfied category. They wouldn't necessarily be interested in your particular coffee house per se, but could literally shut you down if your coffee house shows signs of being a health and safety hazard. The fourth category is called key players. 
And in this category, the stakeholders have both high interest and power in enacting change in the business. So when we think of our coffeehouse setting, this could be your business owners and board of directors. Being someone in power in the business generally gives you the right and authority to make decisions for the company. And so as such, you have the power to influence the direction of the business. As an owner, you would also have interests since you've invested money into the business and you'd want to see returns on your investment. So now that we've gone through the matrix, there is something that is important to note when using this matrix. It is that although you are able to classify the stakeholders into nice little boxes of categories, it doesn't mean that the stakeholders are classified as just that. It's not unusual for stakeholders to change their stance and status and that there would be a shift in power or interest and thus would result in moving them from one category to another. Some examples of these stakeholders that could literally move around would be your customers or employees. Think about it that in our coffee house setting, one barista probably would not make much of a difference if he or she complains about a work issue. But if all the baristas group together to fight against the work issue by threatening to not work, the coffee house might have to consider finding a solution for the work issue to appease the baristas. As mentioned, individually, employees tend to have minimal power but high interest in the business, but collectively, employees could garner enough power as they grow in numbers, which would mean that these stakeholders could start off as keep informed, but could end up as key players in certain situations. So just be aware whilst using this matrix that there is that possibility of movement depending on context. And that is it for me today. I hope you've learned a bit about Mendelo's matrix and how to classify stakeholders in the business. This is a very nifty tool to use when you are presented with any business case scenario because it helps you familiarize yourself with the various people that are connected to the business. Thank you for listening to Accounting Makes Sense. As always, I am your host, MJ the Tutor. If you're keen to connect to be updated with the arrival of the next episode of this podcast or find SEMA resources online, please head on over to my website, www.mjthetutor.com. You can also hit subscribe on whichever platform you are using to listen to this podcast. If you want to connect on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the name MJ the Tutor. So I hope to see you again next time. Ciao for now.